Hello, today we are going to be talking about the F5 container ingress services and how we can bring external traffic into a Kubernetes cluster. Let's say that this is our Kubernetes cluster. It's a closed system that has multiple pods that are running inside. Using container ingress services, we can provide for simple layer four services into the cluster. For example, a bespoke application, database, something like that. We can also provide for HTTP services and layer on additional policies to provide security. Thirdly, we can also make use of mutual TLS, only allow connections that are trusted. So now let's go look at how we're going to make this possible using the F5 container ingress services. So let's review the architecture of how the container ingress services work. The container ingress services is made up of two parts. The first part is what you already know, which is the big IP device. The big IP device is responsible for handling all of the traffic. The second part that you may not be familiar with is what we refer to as the F5 big IP controller for Kubernetes. Now that's a mouthful, but what that is, is a separate control plane piece of software that we will deploy within your Kubernetes clusters. So if we have our Kubernetes cluster here, the issue that we have is the big IP can't run as a container. It can run as a standalone hardware device or on top of a hypervisor like VMware, KVM, or in AWS, Azure, GCP, et cetera. But as a container, that's not gonna work. So what we're gonna have is we're going to take our big IP controller for Kubernetes, and we're going to deploy it in our Kubernetes cluster. What that's going to allow us to do is have a communication that comes from the controller to the big IP that allows us to send traffic through the big IP to the particular service that's running in your Kubernetes service. Here we are in our demo environment. To start with, we have the big IP device. This is running outside of our Kubernetes cluster. So to review, it's running outside of your cluster. Next, let's take a look at what's running inside of the cluster. So inside the cluster are the things that are running inside of here. To take a look, I've deployed the Kubernetes dashboard to look at what services that we have here. In the default namespace, we have two services. We got a TCP service, we have an HTTP service, and in a separate namespace, we have a mutual TLS service that is running the HTTP bin service. So these are our three services that we're going to connect into. To configure the big IP controller for Kubernetes, we are going to deploy a config map that represents the configuration that we want. In this case, we have a config map that contains the following configuration for our TCP, HTTP, and mutual TLS connections that we'll be making. So to apply this configuration, I'm going to apply this. And what we'll see is when we go back to our big IP device here, that it will create a new partition that will have the configuration that is being deployed from Kubernetes to the big IP. So to review, well, what has happened here is when I've applied that config map, the big IP controller for Kubernetes that is inside the cluster has gone out and configured the big IP that runs outside of the cluster to gain information on how to connect from outside into the cluster. Here on the screen, you can see that we have deployed our TCP services, HTTP, as well as uh, mutual TLS. And for demo purposes, we've also deployed a force service to show what happens with the mutual TLS. Let's look at connecting to the TCP service first. To emulate the connection, we're going to use Netcat from this Windows host that is also outside of the Kubernetes cluster. When I configured 
the service, I configured it on the IP address of 10.1.10.80 and listening on port 9000. The way that this service is configured is that when I type text in like hello world, it will echo it back. Here we can see that we have successfully connected to a virtual server that is on the big IP here on 10.1.10.80 on port 9000 and is connecting in to the Kubernetes cluster. So here in this case, we can see that the pool member is the pod here is inside of the cluster and we've connected from outside of the cluster into the Kubernetes cluster. For our second part of the demo, let's take a look at connecting to the HTTP service. The HTTP service is also running inside of our Kubernetes cluster. In this case, we have also deployed a web application firewall policy to demonstrate how we can keep attackers out. So let's say that we have this attacker here that's trying to attack your service. Our web application firewall policy is going to prevent those connections from coming in. Here we are in Postman connecting to our HTTP service. The first connection that we're going to do is the successful connection where we're going to connect through. In this case, we can see that we've made a request to the IP address 10.1.10.80 on port 80, and we've made a request for the URI slash text. And you can see here that the request is coming through. We can also see that we've configured the big IP to forward the original client IP address of the Windows host so that the container that is running inside of the Kubernetes cluster can identify the original IP address of the client that was connecting. Now let's look at how we can simulate the attacker where the attacker is going to be blocked from connecting. In this second example, we've modified our request to also add the X hacker header and it's doing the attack cat, cat Etsy password. I've sent the request in and we can see that that request has been blocked. Going on to the big IP, we can look at the logs on the device to verify that the attack has been blocked. Here you can see that our latest request has been blocked. The third part of our demo is going to be looked at using mutual TLS. So what does it mean to use mutual TLS? What mutual TLS means is that we're going to verify the identity of the user. So let's say that we have a client that's connecting in to our Kubernetes cluster. In the case of using mutual TLS, the cluster is going to verify that it's a fit for the cluster. We're going to verify both the identity of the cluster as well as the identity of the client. So if you have a client that's coming in that is not authorized to connect, the client is going to be blocked as well because it does not have the correct identity. This first example, we're going to be emulating making a connection into the cluster without proper authorization. To emulate this unauthenticated connection, we're going to connect to the virtual server 10.1.10.80 as we did previously on port 443. The way that we've configured this service on the big IP is that we've configured this to only do TCP connection. In this case, this means that the client is going to be connecting directly to the cluster, but because it doesn't have the correct certificate, the cluster is going to block the connection. Going into Chrome, we're going to connect to that port, so 10.1.10.80, and this is over port 443. And the request that we want to make is for a service on HTTP bin, which is going to be status.418. And if this is successful, what we should see is kind of a teapot. In this case, we can see that the connection is being blocked. We're unable to connect, even though there's a valid connection going in. This is because when we're making the connection from Google Chrome, we're not presenting the proper identity that the cluster trusts. 
what we're next going to see is how we're going to use the big IP to proxy the correct identity that the cluster trusts. So in our previous example, we were using a identity that the cluster did not trust, and that identity is going to be passed into the big IP. The big IP is then going to take that connection and proxy it through to the Kubernetes cluster with the identity that is trusted that will be accepted. And what you will see then is what you expect that because the cluster trusts this connection from the big IP, it will be successful and you'll see the connection go through. Going back to Postman, we're going to go into the connection with Mutual TLS. What we've done here is we've configured a virtual server on 10.1.10.81 that is presenting a client-side certificate that is trusted. Looking at the configuration on the big IP, we can see that on this virtual server, if we look under the certificates that are being used, we have create, we're have we referencing this server-side profile that is Istio Server SSL. Looking at the contents of that particular profile, what we'll see is that we have loaded a key pair that is trusted by the cluster. I'm now going to make the request through using the trusted identity that is being provided by the big IP into the cluster. Success! We have now made a mutual TLS connection into the environment. In review, today we have looked at three ways that we can bring traffic into a Kubernetes cluster using the F5 container ingress service. The way that we were able to make these connections was by making the use of a big IP that is running outside of the cluster using the big IP controller for Kubernetes that is running inside of your Kubernetes cluster. During the demo, what we saw was we were able to connect using a TCP connection as well as HTTP. And when we were making an HTTP connection, we were also able to block invalid attacks that we did not want to allow into the cluster. Furthermore, we are able to demonstrate that when using mutual TLS, that if we had connections that were not trusted, they were blocked by the cluster. But when we had them, when these connections were being proxied through a big IP, we were able to connect successfully. I hope you enjoyed this demo on container ingress services. Thanks for watching.